Hey everyone, today's video is sponsored by Capture One and I'm gonna be taking you through a beginning to end workflow for a portrait photo shoot with Capture One 23. So I'm gonna show you how I import and cull images. I'm gonna edit a photo from beginning to end. I'm also gonna show you some of the new features in Capture One 23 and also how I export my images. The first thing I do when I'm editing any photo shoot is to cull and import my images. So I'm gonna select import right here. So this is the photo shoot that I did with Megan and the reason I like culling my photo shoots before I start editing them is because you normally take lots and lots of photos at a portrait photo shoot. You wanna try different poses, different facial expressions, you wanna try shooting in different locations with different lighting, and you don't wanna be editing every single photo that you take at a photo shoot. So in this case, I would be editing over 100 images, which is not realistic. So culling basically means selecting the best images from that photo shoot. So I'm gonna start here by selecting Selecting Enable Groups. This is a feature to Capture One 23 that's going to group similar looking images together to make your culling workflow easier. So you can actually move the slider around to change how large the group is. So as I bring the similarity percentage down, you can see here that it's selecting a group of 185 images. So I want my groups to be a little bit smaller than that. So I'm going to bring the percentage up to about, let's say, 78. And here you see that the groups are much smaller. So I'm gonna bring that down just a little bit more because I do want this next group to be a little bit bigger to include all these images. And basically what this is going to do is help you focus on selecting the best images from each section of your photo shoot so you don't have too many photos that look the same. The next step is to head into viewer. So I've got the first group selected here and I'm gonna go through each image one by one and select which ones I wanna import and which ones I wanna leave behind so I won't be editing these. There is a new feature in Capture One called Face Focus, and this is so handy to keep your hands on the keyboard to make your culling workflow faster. And basically what it is, is that little preview in the top left-hand corner that shows you a 100% crop of the face or the eye of the photo. So you don't have to click and zoom in to see if it's in focus. So for example, I really love this photo here. The pose is beautiful, the lighting's really nice, but I can take a quick glance and see that that is out of focus. So I won't be importing that. Instead, I'll just move across to this one's pretty similar and it is in focus, so I will include that into the import. And as I'm going through and selecting which photos I wanna include, what I'm basically looking out for is photos that catch my eye, that have a cool facial expression or a cool pose. And I'm also trying to select images that look different from each other. So we have a nice variety of photos when it comes to the final set of images. So something else that I wanted to show you with face focus is that you can actually choose what part of the face it's focusing on. So right here, we've got a close up of the eye, but if you go to face focus settings, you can change it so you just see the face and you can also change it to a percentage value as well. I personally like the eyes because I take a lot of close up photos. So having the eyes in focus is very important to me. So once we've made our final selection, we're going to import our images. The next step is to edit our photo and I'm gonna take you through step-by-step step what I do to edit. So first of all, I need to pick which photo to start with. So as you can see, we've got a bit of a variety of lighting situations here. We have this image that's pretty high contrast. Then we have these very dreamy, soft backlit photos. So what I like to do when I'm editing is actually pick a photo that's in between those two. So this photo has some a little bit of soft, dreamy backlight, but it is also a little bit contrasty as well. And we're gonna use that for the base of our editing to get a feel for what we want the photo shoot to look like. Since this photo was partly shot in the shade, it is quite cool. So I'm gonna start by increasing the temperature to make it warmer. And I'm also going to increase the tint more into the pinks to help with those flattering skin tones. The next thing I'm gonna do is work on the tones of the photo. So I'm gonna start off by increasing the contrast just a touch. I'm also going to bring up the shadows to bring in a little bit more detail into those dark parts of the image. And since this is a backlit photo with that soft kind of lighting, I'm also going to bring down the black slider to add some contrast into our photo. And finally, I'm also going to bring down our highlight slider just to add that extra detail in the hair that was a little bit blown out in the original. So here's a before 
and here's an after. Next, I'm going to head into our refine tab here and I'm going to add some sharpening. So I'm gonna move this focus area right to her face. It's really important to look at your image at 100% when you're sharpening or adding grain. So I'm gonna increase the amount and I'm also going to decrease the threshold and the radius just to make the sharpening look a bit finer. I also know some of these other images have some fringing, some purple fringing. So I am going to increase the defringe slider as well because we'll be syncing these settings later on to the other photos. So let's go back to adjust and I'm going to head down to our curves, our tonal curve. And here I'm going to add just a little bit of extra depth into our image. So what I want to do is put a point here in the shadows and bring that down to darken the image. And then I'm going to put another point in the midtones and increase that, which is going to brighten Megan's face. And it adds that really cool moody look to the photo and also a bit of a 3D pop. Next, let's adjust the colors. So for this photo, I'm gonna head into color balance and this is where we're gonna be doing the majority of our editing. So I'm gonna start off with the highlights and I'm gonna bring that up nice and high into like the yellow orange kind of area. I always love using this color in the highlights when I have golden hour portraits because that yellow orange look is going to fall on a person's skin which is flattering and complementary to skin tones. So I think just a little bit more in the oranges there is nice. Then for the shadows, the shadows, because we have a lot of dark areas in this photo, it's going to play a huge part in the feeling and the mood of the image. So I could go for something quite moody with like the blues, but I was actually thinking of playing into those greens that we have in the background and Bringing the shadows here into this greeny yellow kind of area. I like what that looks like. And finally, the midtones, I'm going to use that just to add that extra warmth to the overall photo. And I'm gonna bring that up into the orange and the red area. So just there, I'm happy with that. And the last thing I wanna do is go into our color editor and select red. I wanna increase the saturation of reds and bring down the lightness as well, just to make her lips stand out in the photo a little bit more. You can also use the color editor to help balance skin tones if you have a pretty big color cast on your photo from your location. Luckily here we were shooting on an Australian beach that has pretty white sand so the colors bouncing back on her face are very neutral but you can do that with the orange hue slider so you can make skin tones a little bit more pink or a little bit more yellow. I'm just going to increase the lightness a little bit and that's just going to make her pop that little bit more in the photo. So here's a before and here's an after of all the adjustments that we've made. The next step of my workflow is to get these edits across to all my other photos. So as you can see, and as I mentioned before, we do have quite different lighting throughout this photo shoot. I'm gonna go back to the photo that we edited and select to set this as a reference. I'm also going to save this as a picture style. And I'm gonna make sure my smart adjustments are ticked, so white balance and exposure. And basically what this is going to do is take the white balance and exposure that I've set to this image and set it specifically to all the other images, even though they were shot in different lighting conditions. So let's select save and I'm gonna call this style Megan. Let's head into style and here we have the Megan style that I've created. So let's head to another photo and apply that. Looks good. Um, we'll go to this image, which is quite different. And here's a before and here's an after. Let's head to this photo, which is pretty high contrast and apply it as well. There we go. It's balanced the white balance and the exposure. I think that's done a really good job. This image is pretty overexposed by accident, so we'll see what happens when we apply it. Yeah, it's brought down the exposure quite nicely. So that's the before and that's the after. So this is a really nice way to be able to speed up your workflow. And I could see this really come in handy for portrait sessions because normally I shoot in heaps of different locations with different lighting and the same as weddings as well, where you're shooting from the morning till the night. So you definitely have a lot of different lighting situations. I have this photo of the moon that I've taken that I'm just going to edit real quick. So you can really see those dust spots in the top left-hand corner because I apparently didn't clean my camera before I took this photo. And we have a new feature, which is automatic dust removal here in Capture One. And I'm just gonna show you how that works. So I'm gonna go into adjustments and just here under configure auto adjustments, I only have dust removal ticked. So I'm gonna select auto adjust. And as you can see, it's removed the dust, which I think is a really handy feature because it's always so annoying to go in and do that one by one. Okay, that one was pretty easy. So I've also got this image here that has a lot of lens spots. So we're gonna to go to adjustment, auto adjust, which also has a shortcut, command L. So we can also 
use that. That's amazing. That's perfectly clean. And I also have a few more images here. This one's got a lot of lens spots down the bottom and that's gotten rid of it really nicely. And this one here as well, which has the texture just here. Nice. That's really cool. Here's the before and here's the after. Back to my photo shoot workflow. The last step of the process is to export my images so I can send them over to my team or to my clients. So I'm gonna select all these photos and head to file, export and export. <laughs> and I like to use this preset here, JPEG full size, highest quality. And it's going to export them as a JPEG here quality 100 and resolution 300. And here are all the final images from my photo shoot. I really hope you enjoyed seeing my Capture One workflow. Let me know if you have any questions down in the comments and if you wanna see more workflow videos. But as always, thank you so, so much for watching. I make new videos every single week, so I'll see you all next time. Also, you can't see her, but Evie's like right there under the camera. Come here. Oh, hey. <laughs>